Okay guys, so just a quick one. This is gonna be for all my business and office homies out there that are looking at using the MacBook for business tasks such as Microsoft Teams or Outlook or Skype as well, Skype for business specifically. Now I won't be going into video calling in this video. That will be a separate video. This is just gonna be using Skype for business and also doing some voice calling, but that's it. So in this video, I'm gonna be emulating the workflow of someone in an office or someone who's running a business and they need to use these Skype for Business apps and also some other Microsoft apps and things on the side like Spotify and Google Chrome. So I'll run through first of all the apps I have open and then what we'll do is we'll do a quick time lapse where I'm gonna show you me multitasking and I'm also gonna have the activity monitor up on the left side of the screen so you can see what's happening with the memory and the CPU usage. So first things first, we will have Google Chrome open, playing some 4K videos, some web browsing, but there'll be about 20 tabs or so in Google Chrome. We'll also have Skype for Business in the background on a call. So I have my mobile here and I'll be calling myself and running that in the background. Just to add as well, guys, I'll actually be blurring out this side of the screen so that you can't see it, just because obviously these are business apps they've got sensitive information on there. I obviously can't show it. Now we'll also have Microsoft Teams running and I'll be using that in the background. We will have OneNote, we'll have Outlook. Now this particular Outlook account has something like 10,000 emails. There's a lot going on and as we all know, Outlook can actually take up a significant amount of your memory. So that's gonna be in the background as well. We'll also have a 550 page lorem ipsum, just sample text document of Word. We'll also have a PowerPoint up with about 200 slides, some videos and also some 4K images and some 3D shapes. And you can see here the videos will just play without any issues. So it's all definitely working. And the last thing we'll do is we'll actually open up a large Excel spreadsheet. So this one is 100.7 megabytes in size and it's 5 million sales records. That's 5 million rows. And if I click on this to open it up, you can get an idea of how quick it is to load on this machine. Okay, so that was pretty quickly there. And if you guys wanna see more Excel usage, I'll put a video in the top right hand corner. I won't go into it too much in this particular video, but as you can see, it works totally fine. And if I go to sort and filter these rows, it works very well as well. Now we'll also have Spotify in the background and that's gonna be it for all the apps. Now this is a pretty extreme workload. I don't really expect most people to be using their computer this hard. Uh, but there definitely are some out there that do. So I wanted to do kind of like a worst case scenario thing uh, so you could all have a good idea of how it works. So what we'll do now is I'm going to put up the activity monitor on the left hand side of the screen and I'm gonna do some pretty intense multitasking for the next 10 minutes. I'll time lapse it and then I'll come back to you and report my findings. Now, just right off the bat, just with everything open right now, I'm not doing anything, but it is running in the background. This is what we're getting out of the RAM usage. So Outlook is using the majority. Uh, and out of eight gigabytes, this is a base model MacBook Air, 256 gigabyte hard drive, eight gigabytes of RAM. We're already using six gigabytes out of the RAM and swap, we're using actually 2.91 gigabytes, which is quite a lot. Now, just before we get into the video, let me actually call myself using Skype for business. I'm just gonna be calling my mobile phone and this is just gonna be running in the background. Okay, so as you can see now, we have a call in the background and the memory usage hasn't changed a whole lot, neither has the swap.
Okay guys, so it's been about 10 minutes now, and as you can see, Outlook is using up a fair bit of the RAM, so it's using a gigabyte, and then we've got Teams, Excel, PowerPoint, some Google Chrome tabs, which was about 20 different tabs, all playing 4K videos, some internet browsing, and also some Reddit. And then we've also got Skype for Business down here, uh, the actual main Teams application, Microsoft Word, and then some other stuff down below there. So if we now look at the total memory usage, out of eight gigabytes, we're using over six and a half gigabytes. Now I've noticed it's a pretty common theme with the M1 Max on Big Sur that there's always gonna be about a gigabyte to a gigabyte and a half of memory free at all times. Any excess is actually gonna be transferred onto the swap memory, uh, well, just the swap, which is, as you can see here, again, quite high at 2.6 gigabytes. Now, what does that mean for the longevity of your SSD? Because obviously with swap memory, that's being written to the internal SSD on the Mac and not on the memory. And the answer is the jury is still out. In theory, it will reduce the life of your Mac. By how much, if at all, no one really knows. You could very potentially get six, seven years out of this machine using it heavily this hard every day, but it's gonna require some further testing, which I'll try to do on my channel. But again, like if you guys just either can't justify spending the extra two or $300 to upgrade to the 16 gig model, or you just don't have the money, I think you'll be fine because as you can see, this was a pretty extreme example of multitasking and I didn't have any slowdowns. There were no issues, no spinning beach balls. It was all very, very smooth. Uh, yes, we were using up quite a bit of the swap, but at the end of the day, this worked perfectly fine. So I don't think you should have any issues, but like I've always been saying, guys, if you can afford it, definitely always get the 16 gigabyte model wherever you can, but the eight gigabytes will still be fine for the majority of people. Now, moving into the CPU tab, there's really not much going on here. These aren't really resource intensive apps, so we've actually got about 15 to 20% usage on the actual CPU. So pretty much 85 to 90% is just sitting there idle, which is to be expected because this particular usage scenario is not gonna be very CPU intensive. Now moving on to the actual thermals of the Mac. So th this whole Mac in this setup, multitasking so much, has probably been going for about 30 to 40 minutes at this stage in total, because this is actually the second time I've made this video, the first one had some audio issues. So if we actually feel the thermals of the Mac, and guys, I know this isn't a very technical or scientific way to measure the heat. I do have a thermal camera coming in the next few days, so I'll try and do a big thermal test video to upload that shortly, but I can't feel any heat at all. This is literally still cool. If I feel it down here and then up here, it's pretty much exactly the same. There's actually no difference. This, this would be very comfortable to have on your lap. Even if I lift it up, put my hand underneath, it's cool. And this has been multitasking like this for about 20 to 30 minutes uh, at least. So there's absolutely no issues there. And obviously this is the air version. So there's no fan at all. There's no fan noise, which is great, especially for calls. I know with my old MacBook, the fan would just be super, super loud and it would actually impact work and business calls I was having on my laptop because you could definitely hear the fan in the background, even recording from the Apple headphones that I used to use. So guys, that's it for this video. Again, any questions or comments or further testing you want me to do, please let me know. I will be doing a Zoom and Skype video call and also Google Hangouts testing in the very near future, so stay tuned. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.